All right, I didn't talk about this in my other videos, but I want to talk about it now because I think it's somewhat important and, and quite interesting. And that is that fatty oxidation actually occurs, so beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, okay? So the big question becomes, well, how does the fatty acid enter the mitochondria, okay? Or, or how, can I, how can I get this um, fatty acid across the membrane? All right, because remember, the uh, mitochondria is a double membrane structure. It has an outer membrane and an inner membrane, and um, you'd have to cross this membrane in order to get into the matrix, right? And um, you're not going to be able to do that because the inner mitochondrial ma um, membrane is quite impermeable to just about everything, okay? And, th and that's rightfully so because it creates the proton gradient that's used to drive ATP synthesis, okay? So this is not going to cross easily. All right, so the question becomes, how does it cross? Well, it looks really complex here. This looks like a complicated mechanism and uh, process of crossing, but um, it's really not. So here, here's my membrane, okay? And here's translocase, okay? That's just going to be basically a membrane transport protein, okay? That's going to allow for transportation across the membrane, all right? So it's an inner membrane protein, or an integral membrane protein, rather. Um, so what you have here is you have this molecule, and it's called carnitine, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to take the acyl-CoA, and all acyl means here, and what I mean by that here is that this means that it's a longer chain, okay? Some unspecified longer chain, maybe it's 16 carbon chain, okay? But you use the term acyl to um, designate that. So I have the acyl-CoA, right? And that's what we're going to use. Um, that's what we want for the beta oxidation process, but we can't use it. We can't cross the membrane, okay, with it, right? So what we have to do is we have to put this carnitine molecule on the acyl group, okay? And that's accomplished and, or catalyzed by carnitine acyl transferase 1, okay? So this enzyme right here is going to catalyze the reaction. It's going to remove this CoA, all right, and replace it with carnitine. And that's where you get this, okay? You get acyl carnitine. Now, the thing about that is it's permeable to the membrane. It can cross the membrane. It can cross through this translocase, okay? It can use this translocase and cross through, okay? So that's what's going to happen. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to replace the CoA with carnitine. Acyl carnitine is going to cross the membrane, enter the matrix. I have it labeled as the matrix here, okay? And then from there, it's going to essentially go through the reverse reaction, okay? This carnitine acyl transferase 2, okay, is a catalyze, enzyme is going to catalyze the removal of carnitine here and the formation of this acyl CoA because that's what we want. We want this acyl CoA here because that's what's going to be used in the beta oxidation process. So essentially, there's coenzyme A in here, and that's just going to be put back on to the acyl group, okay? And the carnitine is going to be removed, and of course the carnitine, once it's removed, can then recross the membrane and um, enter over here, which would be, I guess, the cytosol or cytoplasm, depending on how you want to, how you want to call it. Um, so it's going to remove, it's going to move back across, okay, essentially. So that's how this entire process works. I mean, it looks compl complex, but all you're doing is taking the acyl, co you're taking the CoA off the acyl, acyl group, putting carnitine on, the, carn the acyl carnitine is permeable, can cross the membrane, okay, crosses the membrane, it's removed by essentially the reverse reaction, and then the carnitine is transported back across the membrane, and the acyl CoA ends up in the mitochondrial matrix where you want it.